Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the Compass Rose Conservatory of Fine Arts, home of Theater Is, the Theater Book Club podcast. Our performance will be beginning shortly. We would like to once again thank you all for joining us. At this time, we ask you to silence all cell phones. Unless, of course, a cell phone is how you're listening to the show. Now please, sit back, relax, and enjoy William Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Welcome today to the Theater Is Podcast. I'm J.S. Peterson. I am Jacob Brock. It's a, it's an honor to have you back with us. Hopefully you're back with us. If this is your first time, who oh boy. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh, but also, you should check out last month's episode. But if you're already here, you might as well join us for this one. Uh, today we're going to be going with... Uh, the Bard himself has written a play. Many plays, in fact. But the one we're going to talk about uh, today is none other than Much Ado About Nothing. A, a, a classic through and through. Um, Shakespeare can be pretty difficult to kind of to dip your toes into, but here in Compass Rose, we wanted to get right to it and and really get our feet wet with some Shakespearean literature. We let you off easy last time with, <laughs> with our, uh, our intense Steinbeck review, mm. as it were. Um... But yeah, we're getting into the the real, as classic as of Mice and Men is, this is a, a real uh, bona fide, you know, it's it's a Cla- literal classic literature. There's American classic, but this is world, national, renowned, renaissance classic literature. Theatrical. Well, it was before renaissance, but it's like a theatrical yes. classic, yeah. without a doubt. Any particular thoughts before we jump in? We're going to summarize, do some analysis, but we really, I mean, any, any Shakespearean literature, you can spend a lifetime finding every little meter and rhyme and wordplay but today we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple and light because so many people have already done that like if you need any examples look no further than our our, our friend not our friend not a friend of the podcast but tom stoppard who has written like three plays just about hamlet it's so. <laughs> been reviewed through and through but we're here just to kind of really just get into the work get people reading shakespeare and and so we're going to kind of scratch the surface, mostly focus on the story elements and beats, but this should be good. Jacob, do you have any thoughts before we get into this summary? Uh, before we get started, I just want to introduce everybody to our uh, our third uh, little podcast host who's going to be here every time, and it's actually Basil the Frog here in the corner <laughs> of my room. Uh, she's going to be here with us every episode, so more or less, more or less every episode. One of our favorite uh, crew members here at Compass Rose, and I say that staring at our videographer, David, <laughs> as he's standing in the corner. <laughs> in the room. I did that purely to mess with you. <laughs> he's trying really hard not to laugh right now. But enough about us, enough about our personal lives. Let's, let's dive right into it. Act one, scene one. So this starts off classically. Uh, Shakespeare loved uh, Italy. He wrote a lot of plays in there. Allegedly. One, al- Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so this one is starting off, I, I believe, uh, the the name of Messina. Messina, Messina, Messina yeah, yeah. yep. So we, we start off in the courtyard of a nobleman named Leonardo. Leonardo. Leonato, yes. excuse me. And a messenger arrives. Yes. Yeah. Th- this play has a lot of characters, and we're going to try our best to keep track of them and help you guys understand how these they kind of work together, how work they interact. Together, how like like family trees, relations, ties. But Where for, the puzzle pieces meet. For this one, we start off, we have Leonato. Uh, Who is, who's the governor, like the nobleman. He, yeah, he, he is the governor of Messina. Then we have his brother, Antonio, I believe, yes. Uh, he's just a, another nobleman, person of high ranking. Um, comes in and out, not the most important. Then we have our two young will be two young lovers <laughs> but we n- have but not yet hero which is the daughter of leonato she's kind of a very quiet traditional type naive some may say kind of just is waiting for a man to court her properly mm-hmm. and then we have beatrice which is my personal favorite <laughs> beatrice is legendary i feel like we just you, they cannot be understated if we're talking about much ado. Mm-hmm. The fact that Shakespeare writ, wrote a, a, a woman like this in the time is progress beyond his years. Despite you know the fact that she was never played by a woman, at least in Shakespeare's time. Yeah. Um, but, for those of you who don't know, traditionally uh, in those times, 
uh, only men were allowed to perform in the theater. There were no women allowed, so all so it would typically be young men and young boys mm-hmm. who would play the roles of women. But slowly, as that faded out, uh, women started taking the stage and were better for it. Yeah, that and for, then for, uh, Hairspray came out and they undid all. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we don't talk but about musicals to, here. To, to explain who Beatrice is, she is headstrong. Uh, she is the niece of Leonardo. She's orphaned, so she's not related to Antonio at all. But well, I mean, distantly related. So she she's orphaned. She's taking care of Leonardo. She's a firecracker. She is a firecracker. She's witty. She's yep. smart, and she, she will not be wed. No, witty, smart, will not be wed. She she is not interested in courting or marriage. She just wants. She wants a lot, but we'll, we'll get into that. Later. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll get into that. So to, to start off our scene, it's it's those four in the courtyard, and a messenger arrives. And then this messenger comes bearing a, an important message uh, that Don Pedro will be coming, and he's going to bring his army with him. And, and uh, for those who don't know, a Don is a Spanish nobleman. It's kind of like if his name were like Lord Pedro. It, it Don is just the Spanish equivalent. So and then that'll come up here and there with a couple of characters. But Don Pedro just won a, a mighty victory against his his brother who 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 tried to overthrow him. His brother is a uh, a bastard. And for those who doesn't know what that ha- connotation means back in the day, uh, it was a, 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 an illegitimate a, son, an illegitimate or a child, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But son is the general. Yeah, and there was a lot of them. And so when when we say that he was a bastard, we're not using like profanity or language. It was the title bestowed upon these children of promiscuous out of, out of wedlock, yes. essentially, uh, whose parents were unwed. Yeah. So Don John got defeated by Don Pedro, and his his war party made up of other noblemen from around mm-hmm. are, are coming to visit Messina Messina yes and and Leonardo Leonato, Leonato. excuse me. I just know because people are going to crucify you for it <laughs> uh, is to host this party and so uh, th- there's some excitement but uh, uh, Lady Beatrice uh, asked the messenger if, if a particular soldier survived the war and, and she's asking about Benedict mm-hmm not because she likes him, quite the opposite. No, she's kind of... They have a feud. They have a feud. And they, they argue quite often. Mm-hmm. And they're some of the best witty wars I've seen. Oh, absolutely. In Shakespeare. It's, it's, it's clever and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> for sure. They, they shortly arrive in that first scene. Uh, right. Don, Don, Don Pedro. Don and, Pedro's and, party. And that, that's made of Don Pedro. Claudio. Claudio. Benedict. Benedict. Uh, Balthazar, Balthazar, and Don John, Don John, the bastard brother who was defeated. In, indeed. So, uh, so you you know Don John, you know Don Pedro, uh, you know Benedict, um, sort of. And then there's Claudio. Claudio is our other young lover. He is, uh, on, the, 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 he is honored. He honored Don um, Pedro in battle and did. Mm-hmm. So he is. Highly bestowed upon honor and, and and valor, right? Absolutely. And and he he he, it, it, it almost like he's the war hero coming home. Like he's the mm-hmm. reason we won. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case because no, but they they came back with very little cash. It's true. There was yeah. It, so it, Don, it, Don, I think Don he even did, he mentioned specifically that like no men of mm-hmm. of high ranking, especially were injured or maybe not injured but they weren't killed so don john wasn't just beat he was stomped yeah into he the was ground. handled he was <laughs> he he got clapped <laughs> mm-hmm, for sure for sure and so infusing the modern language into our, <laughs> our theater podcast with, about shakespeare so they all arrive you got claudio and benedict which are kind of like young soldiers uh claudio is a flor 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 tine He's, he's from Florence. Florentinian? Florentinian <laughs> uh, nobleman. So they're, they're not actually Spanish, Claudio and Benedict. They just are fighting for this Spanish lord. And they come victorious. At, at their arrival, Beatrice and Benedict, Benedict waste no time. Oh, getting right back into yeah, it. Yeah, they... <laughs> right. Uh, I think she says something along the lines of, it's like, it's a good thing that you don't love any of the ladies here because they'd have to put up with you more than they even would want to. Ever. <laughs> There's one particular line. It's like, uh, 
I'm going to paraphrase because I can't get it off the top of my well, head. Well, Shakespeare, but, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Beatrice says something along the lines of, why are you still talking, Benedict? No one marks you. <laughs> like, no one cares what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Benedict is quick to clap back. <laughs> and but eventually, even he can't she, match her. Generally, she comes out she, on Yeah, top. she wins. Um, uh, and then as everyone uh, disperses, Claudio... Uh, turns to his friend Benedict and, and tells him that he wants to marry Hero, Leonato's wife. No, <laughs> Leonato's <laughs> no. daughter. Yes, well <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and make her his wife. And so uh, in, in that scene, we get uh, the revelation that Don John is still with his brother. We get uh, Claudio a- expressing his love for Hero. We get... Both very quickly very very quickly like but, on site yeah <laughs> and, and we get uh benedict and beatrice's both like not hatred but disdain for like marriage right and, and love. right they're yeah. both kind of yeah they're not they're they're they don't have a dog in the race or so they believe <laughs> yes and and that that's the, f- the first scene is very expositional expositional in that it really gives you a sense of the characters and it, it, it is quick um but it, the, I, I have to say though, it, and granted, it's it's the master at work, but mm. it really it introduces just about everything you need to know about these characters immediately. Yeah. Everything that's going to be important going forward. Oh, and uh, before we move on, uh, there was one more character we said that was there, Balthazar. Balthazar, yes. He is the attendant to Don. He's like one of Don Pedro's men. Right. And and there are other men who work for both Don John and Don Pedro, and we're gonna try keeping it straight for you, but. Just remember, Balthasar is with Don Pedro. Also, he's kind of a, a bard in a yeah, way. He's he a musician. Sings. Yeah. yeah. So then we roll on to scene two. Uh, this one's actually remarkably short. And yes. I, I, I think, it, if I remember correctly, scene two generally, like in each act, is pretty short. At least a couple of them are on the shorter side. It kind of has that. And like I the, could be the, wrong. This, the first, second scene of, yeah, yeah, of yeah, every yeah. act. Um, so this one's pretty short. It's. It, it, it kind of really gets into the theme of this play, and that theme is overhearing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, hearing something that either you're not supposed to yeah. or... And sometimes it's correct and sometimes it's incorrect, incorrect. which we're about to see. So Antonio, right. Leonato's... The misunderstanding is, yeah. is rampant. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and so Le- uh, Leonato's brother, Antonio, comes in, and he's like, Oh my gosh, uh, Don Pedro wants to marry... Hero. Hero. He's in love with her, and we're going to talk about it. He's, he's, I'm going to bring it to everybody's attention that, at the dance tonight. And, and the reason for this is because uh, Don Pedro told Claudio that he would help him at this ball that's happening tonight court Hero. And, and Don Pedro was going to tell Hero and Leonardo that Claudio was interested. Right, he was going to be his wingman. <laughs> but Antonio, mishearing this conversation between Don Pedro, Benedict, and... Claudio thinks that Don Pedro is courting Hero. He he goes and tells Hero and Leonato, watch for Don Pedro's advances tonight. And that is kind of where the first instance of this, um, a lot of places, you know, say it's like much ado about nothing, but a lot of people, like it's much ado about noting because they a bunch of people note things. It's true. It's, and, it's mentioned several times in the script. Yeah, so this is like kind of the first instant. We, we get this like... Off the bat, the, the uh, uh, we get presented with some inciting incident to what becomes kind of this comedy of errors. That's yeah. another <laughs> another Shakespeare reference, but it's essentially a, a comedy of errors. Yeah, and and so the then we go to the next scene. It's uh, g- happening very s- the same night as scene two, but it's Don John in his private chambers complaining. About how awful his life is. He's, he's very, very upset, this he, poor man. He he just got defeated in a battle. He's embarrassed always being with his brother. Um, and he's complaining to one of his companions named Conrad. Or uh, Conrad in some editions. Uh, we're going to go with Conrad for now. Yes. Uh, he, he's like, my life sucks. I hate my brother. <laughs> I hate these snarky lords that he hired in war. I want to just... I'm dishonored and everything's bad. And then comes in one of his other attendants, which uh, I believe is... Is it 
Boratio. Boratio. There's so many different pronunciations yeah. of things like that, but in, in my head it was borchacho, but Borch I know that's wrong. <laughs> I know that that is probably. Um, let me just because we have it here, I'm just gonna look up the pronunciation just to see if we can find out. Just well, just, to, just to double check, and if this makes it in the episode. <laughs> I don't that's, think that's, that's right. right that doesn't sound proper. <laughs> Let's go with your pronunciation for now. <laughs> with Boratio? Boratio. That's very close to Horatio. Well, that's, that's a Hamlet. Shakespeare used Catherine likes. Off to good. Boratio. Okay, let's go with Boratio. So, then enters Boratio. And he also overheard this conversation with Don John. Don John. No, Don John. Don. The, no, it is it is Don John. He went to John Don John to tell him he overheard the conversation between Claudio loving Hero. Oh yes, yes, yes. So, uh, but he heard it correctly. So he goes to Don John and tells him, "Hey, Claudio is going to try courting this this girl. Is this kind of like a perfect opportunity to mess them up, like cause yeah, discourse? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he they want to tell Claudio that Don. Oh yeah, Pedro, oh, yeah. that's his that's, Pedro that's his plan. Is going to take Hero for right. himself. Right. So, so he comes in. He tells Don John that, oh, we we like this is what's going on. This is what's going to happen tonight. And, and it's this ball that they're wearing masks. And he's like, Don, we we tell Claudio that Don John is going to take. Hero, hero for, for himself. himself, and so they kind of hatch this little plan scheme to like cause discourse within Pedro's party in mm -hmm. hopes to maybe stir up the pot, which is already building up a previous sort of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So, so already we we get to this ball, and there's one party who thinks Don Pedro is going for hero and then there's another party who wants other people to believe that don Pero pedro is going towards hero and then there's just claudio and benedict who are just blissfully wish this evening is gonna go well <laughs> yeah <laughs> act two scene one so we get into it and and we're finally at the the ball uh inter Leonato's party with Beatrice, Hero, and Antonio. They're all dressed nice. It's a lovely ball, and they all have masks at their side. Beatrice takes this moment to rip on Benedict a little bit in front of everyone. Exactly. She goes, you know, if you if you combined if you combined Don John and Benedict, they'd be the perfect man because they'd talk just enough, <laughs> <laughs> not too much, not too little. And, and, and like everyone's kind of like staring at her, like, geez. If you keep acting like this, you're never gonna get a husband. You'll not. Yeah, and she's like, I don't care. <laughs> That's one of my favorite Shakespearean tropes. Is the is the uh, the woman who's just like, I don't care, because I know she doesn't, mm -hmm. which is why, and that's so out of out of the realm of anything happening uh, in that time period. So it's one of my because you know it's it's just one of my favorite Shakespearean tropes. It, for sure, for sure. So hero kind of patiently listening to this conversation gets cautioned by both her her father and her uncle and antonio yes yeah be, antonio being the uncle yes hey watch out for uh don pedro that that guy's a rapscallion and and so this this is the plant that grew from the seeds of antonio's mishearing <laughs> because then from this misunderstanding it really sets up don john's scheme because now hero is expecting to be courted by Don John, not by Don Pedro, excuse by me. Don Pedro, it, yeah. And, and Don Pedro's expecting court for Claudio. Claudio's expecting to court for himself. Right. Benedict just wants to dance. Yeah, he's <laughs> just there for the party. <laughs> yeah. And so everyone's here expecting different things. And uh, so so quickly, Don, Don Pedro's uh, party arrives, and Don Pedro, who had this plan to help Claudio goes up to Hero and asks her for to, to walk about with him or, or to dance with him. It already, the, this miscommunication is going swiftly into effect for everybody. Uh, and and this, this scene is kind of really cool. The way, the way I staged it in my head is everyone kind of finds their partner mm -hmm. and there's like a dance going on and it, as it's spinning, is there's like six, uh, probably less than that. There, uh, there's a bunch of little segments of conversation from each character and that's where 
we get a little taste of some some minor characters mm-hmm. um so th- there's there's two there there's uh hero has these attendants l- ladies right. in waiting uh that one is margaret and the other one is ursula mm-hmm. um and, and they dance with uh, uh balthasar and, and antonio and, respectively yeah and so you kind of get these these minor characters who come into big play later, right. little, little snippets of how they are. Um, and, and if I may, um, I think that speaks a lot to kind of what the the theme of the show is too, and kind of that fragmentation of speech because it's broken up into you're learning bit by bit, mm-hmm. uh, and that plays into I think the greater whole of there being uh, kind of fragmented conversation, meaning different things. Whereas in this case, it's maybe not as explicit as that. Yeah, but it certainly is piece by piece, which is how they're putting everything together so these characters now even the audience is just getting pieces of conversation so the audience themselves are almost part of the constant miscommunication because they're only hearing parts they're hearing bits here and there absolutely Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and so which is brilliant i think it's utterly brilliant so so uh and so everyone's masked no one quite knows who everyone is and two partners that get matched up together is beatrice and benedict oh the good old, thunk it. And, and so beatrice she, she by the way how do they not know that's the the question i always have about these masquerade scenes it's like how do you not know <laughs> half your face is generally still exposed and you're like the same body weight and, and the build. voice is not generally changed but you know it's fun it's 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 all in good fun theater of the mind <laughs> theater of the mind's eye so they, they get matched up and Beatrice really hasn't stopped braiding Benedict no she keeps going she, and so she's here dancing with Benedict Benedict's pretending not to be Benedict as she just braids him well, in- she's like she, she calls him I think a, a jester mm-hmm. um and he's just that he basically calling him an idiot over and over and yeah, over and again. this genuinely like they're, they're used to their like contest of wits but this kind of like immediately really hurts his feelings right but it also kind of puts him in a position where he's like i'll i'll make sure benedict knows <laughs> i'll yeah. tell him I'll, like, I'll tell him uh, yeah <laughs> yeah thanks. yeah i can do that and, and and what we do learn is that apparently uh somehow benedict in the past has hurt beatrice mm-hmm. and i don't think it's I think it's there's hints towards it later on, but especially now it doesn't go into right. why. It's definitely not like explicitly stated yeah. as far well as I know. And, and so we get a little backstory into why these two feud so hard, and apparently Benedict seemed to really upset. He was Beatrice. the initial aggressor. Yeah, and so that that conversation kind of dances into the crowd, and and then uh, Baracho. <laughs> Baraccio. Baraccio? Baraccio goes to uh, Don John and points out Claudio. So apparently he's immune to, to the, the, the master. <laughs> yeah, he's like, the, <laughs> he's like, that's Claudio. And so part of their plan is they go to Claudio and pretend he's Benedict. They go, hey, Benedict. Uh, and, and Claudio kind of goes with it. Yeah, they're like, Claudio's like, oh, this is fun. They think I'm Benedict. Uh, and they go, dude. Don Pedro swore his affection for Hero. And he's going to marry her tonight, like right now. <laughs> and, and Claudio's kind of a, a pansy. He, like, he's <laughs> this big war hero with great honor, but the minute he is slighted in any way, he kind of throws a big fit <laughs> and go pouts. So, he, farewell, the, there, farewell, therefore, Hero, as he says. So he, so Don John says, hey, Benedict. You know, but is actually Claudio. Tell Don Pedro not to marry this lady of lesser standing. St- yeah, status. Um, and the the like Claudio kind of like Don John and his party kind of neander off, and, and mm-hmm. Claudio's just sitting there all like mopey, and, mopey and like, distraught. But I am in love with. <laughs> Why would Don Pedro do this to me? And and and, and then Benedict, kind of the jester he is <laughs> he's like he 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 nudges claudio and like it looks like john john's stealing hero for himself <laughs> to which claudio runs away <laughs> uh so then quickly don pedro appears looking for claudio and and benedict's like uh claudio's all heartachy man uh he thinks you're trying to win hero and 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 pedro pedro's really confused He's right. like, this was my. As I, he would be, like, I told him I would 
oh, I gotta go talk to Claudia. Like, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> and so, when when Beatrice appears with Claudio, to I, I suppose to hash things out, mm-hmm. Benedict sees Beatrice again, and hurt himself, also runs away. Right. <laughs> These lovers don't have much resilience. No. But such is the way of young love. <laughs> so they, they actually, they clear everything up. Like, this this little incident is just a taste of uh, discontent among the lovers. Right. Like, it, it was quickly resolved. They got together, and, and uh, they go up to Leonardo, and, and they're like, uh, I, Don Pedro, the prince of... St- Spain basically mm-hmm. <laughs> thinks these two young lovers should marry and, and Leonardo is like oh heck yeah let's set a date he's like I'm down for that yeah I can get jiggy with it <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know the two everyone's like yeah and after uh, setting the date uh, for Claudio and Hero's marriage Don Pedro l- uh, proposes a scheme he's like hey Beatrice it looks like I should find you someone to marry. I'll you, find you a husband, you old he, spinster you. And he's like, hey, heck, even myself, you know, joking. <laughs> and, you know, he pisses off Beatrice and she storms off. And then right. she, then uh, Don Pedro looks to Leonato, Claudio, uh, and Antonio. And it's like, we should get her and Benedict together. <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> and everyone's like, you're right, we should. <laughs> Because, you know, everyone's focused about getting married. And so they hatch a scheme themselves to set up, uh, you know, good old Benny boy and Beatrice. Right. And well, and this is also where we kind of learn. Um, I, I, I said before that it's not explicitly stated, and it, it still isn't, but we kind of learned that uh, at one point, uh, Benedict had, had sort of, Beatrice had, had fallen in love with him, and he kind of just... He played the game a little bit, yeah. Uh, which which is what hurt her, which is which is why he was the initial yeah. aggressor in the. So so Benedict doesn't believe in love, but he believes in courting women and having <laughs> fun. So well, I mean, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so it it seems that it, it, we start seeing like how this came about in in ways, and and that's the end of scene one. Now, he... act two, scene two. <laughs> So we're back in Don John's quarters, and he's he. It's always it's very short, and it always involves Don John in his yeah. quarters. <laughs> and he's pouting. He's like, "My plan didn't work." Oh, this Cla- is lame. Uh, uh Cla- Claudio and Hero are getting married, but good old Boratio. He's or, just Boratio. That's gonna be the gag for this episode. Borchacho. Is, yeah, Borchacho. <laughs> uh, he's like he's like, "Hey, man, I'll I'll, I'll stop that mar- that marriage from happening. I'll, I'll I'll get in there and make sure that does not happen." And Don Pedro's like, how. How do I do that? <laughs> How's that gonna happen? And and, and uh, Bracio says that he can. He's been courting one of Hero's ladies in waiting, Margaret. In Mar- fact, yeah, yeah. And, and Margaret is. Uh, she's actually a kind of really cool character. Oh yeah, agreed. She, she's just fun. She's super <laughs> flirtatious with lots of sexual undertones. Is kind of most of what her character. It, like she, yeah, she, she's a rap scallion for sure. She, oh no, she's yeah. She flirts with most of the men in this play at some point. Oh yeah, she's she's a little bit. She's a firecracker in a different way. Yeah, than Beatrice for sure. So good, Bracio is kind of courting her, and he's like, "Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up to Hero's window at night, call for Margaret, and start swooning on her. And then you, Don John, need to get Claudio." You know, close enough to see, but far enough that he can't recognize. And so tell he him, thinks he thinks that, that it's you. Margaret yeah, that Margaret is is hero, hero being unfaithful. And so they hatch another scheme, a big brain, a mm-hmm. big brain scheme. And, and you know, Don John is thrilled. He just wants to slight his brother and this war hero. So he's like, yes. And he's I'll, like, and if this works, I'll give you a thousand bucks. You're like. <laughs> He will reward well, him. Well, Ducats, but yes. Ducats. <laughs> a, a large sum of money. So, already the... the, the we, we kind of... what At first, Don John is kind of just like this silent dude moping. He, mm-hmm. he slowly becomes... Quickly, excuse me. Becomes the Criminal antagonist. Mastermind. Yeah, of like... 
like I keep have I have to ruin this marriage. It's like this is my purpose in life now because my first plan didn't work. And, and that that's another uh, scene two that's just quickly gone and through. Which brings us to Act Two, Scene Three. So this is kind of just off somewhere in the uh, the palace of Leonardo. Uh, Benedict is talking to himself how Claudio's changed. You know, the classic, like, right. bro, you change. <laughs> well, like, it's the best friend move. When yeah. You, when, when your homeboy gets a girlfriend, you're like, ah, oh, crud, we're no, going we through do, this again. We don't get to hang out. and We don't get... We... Friday nights are no longer for the boys. Yeah, fr- <laughs> Friday... Saturdays are reserved for the boys, but Friday nights are, unfortunately, date night. Mm-hmm. So he's just by himself, moping. He's like, I'm never gonna do that, ever. <laughs> yeah, he's like, pisha. <laughs> and, and so... Like me in sixth grade and me again now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, he thinks he lost his best friend and that he, all he talks about is hero. And, and they're approaching wedder, a wedding and he sits there pondering what perfect woman would have, how, how perfect a woman would have to be for to make him settle down. Right. And... and uh, he, you know, he's just, like, going off. She'd have to be, like... And he's, like, listing all these it, very, it's, like, it's, high... It's an intense list. Yeah. And and so, he, he's there, like, monologuing to himself. Right. Like a grumpy, angsty man. You and know, it's a Shakespeare. <laughs> he, he hears uh, uh, Claudio... And Don Pedro Don on their Pedro, way. They're coming. And Leonato, which is the important part, that Leonato is with them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he's like, oh, they're coming, and I'm moody. I'm gonna hide an eavesdrop on them. <laughs> But they kind of, they see him. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Don Pedro is like, hey, did you guys see where Benedict went? He, I saw him. You guys. Where, where's he hiding at? Did you see him? He was like, he's right over there. Oh, this is the perfect opportunity to hatch our plan. Mm. So they, they kind of shuffle over close enough to where Benedict can hear them. And, and they start loudly talking about how Beatrice loves Benedict. It's true. Yeah. And then. Oh yeah, it's it's a big thing, and, and they're like making it like a big like kind of like oh man. Well, Balthazar sings. Yeah, yeah like oh makes God, yeah. a love, probably a love sonnet. No right. Way. And, well, no doubt. And and he, he Balthazar sings a song, and and he's like oh she she just shows her scorn because she's she's afraid she's she doesn't want to be rejected she doesn't want to be embarrassed so they they start selling that she's you know madly in love with Benedict and. He he's beside himself. He's right. like, no way. She like called me a fool last night. There, I got really hurt. <laughs> she said I was a big dumpy idiot. <laughs> and, and and so, th- th- they're planting the seeds of like, oh, Beatrice loves me. Yeah, because like, because at this point, Don Pedro is still asking questions to Leonardo, who's playing along with it. Yeah, and and all while Benedict is listening, <laughs> quote unquote hidden, but yeah. listening. And, and, and so they, they, they scurry off and get ready for dinner. And, and Benedict's like, hold up. And and then he starts thinking about Beatrice and she, he starts assigning all of her qualities to the list of qualities that he just listed off. He's like, hold on. She mad. She, she checks every box. Wait a minute. That's it. I think. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and he's like, for the sake of Beatrice, which I think is really funny. That is really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna marry her. So he completely in in one scene one one eighty entirely he's entirely flipped his opinion. And, and and so he's like, I'm I'm gonna marry her. And and to kind of like strike home, it kind of feels like you know, kids playing matchmaker on playground. Leonato makes Beatrice go get him for dinner. Right. And, and she's like, I don't wanna fine. It's the entirety of a high school in Idaho Falls <laughs> playing matchmaker. And, and so she goes over and she's like, dinner's ready. And, and he's sitting there with hearts in his eyes and like, okay, and he's let's trying to get like, some dinner. He, he's trying to assign love in her harsh right. words. He's trying to figure it out. And, and the only reason he believed, you know, this this ploy, the, the sting operation, is because Leonardo is a part of it. It's true. <laughs> he's like, Leonardo man. being involved made it. This All the more legitimate. The, the man of... The, he's he's too old to play tricks like that, you know? Right. He's the governor he should of Messina. Be, he should be far too mature for this. But the answer is he's not. <laughs> no, certainly not. But that's a theme of, of, of Shakespeare's writing. If you, you read more plays, and, and we'll be reading some later on down the line, is noblemen 
don't act like you like uh they're very childish usually and then like peasants are like super educated and like <laughs> understand the world and it's it, the political commentary yeah, of the time without a doubt where where the, the the noble are usually fools and and we'll see later as some peasants and guards come about are the like people that get it right and, and shakespeare was playing to the crowds oh certainly I oh mean, certainly yeah <laughs> and th- that's i think that takes us to the end of act two and so we'll be seeing how how this all plays out in the, in the next couple acts uh it it, it goes there there's a rampant e- escalation of, <laughs> of all that's going on and Immediate. it's gonna get a bit confusing but hold on if, we'll, if you weren't already confused rest assured you will be <laughs> and we're gonna try our best to rein it in act three scene one so this this one starts off with uh, Hero and her two attendants Ursula and Margaret Margaret and they are they're also in on getting Beatrice and Benedict together so they're kind of uh, making their because it's kind of like the boys take care of the boy and the girls right so they're like the now Hero's involved mm-hmm. and she so she yeah she's telling them she says hey go get Beatrice and um, tell like tell them the, about the gossip that you supposedly heard yeah and, and so. Everyone's in on getting these two. I, I kind of almost root for, you know, Beatrice and Benedict's love story way more than Claudio and <laughs> like the central conflict of it. I care more about right. the, the 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 two feuding lovers, and uh, right. and so like they're, they're basically they're say go like start talking about how you heard Benedict say he was madly in love with Beatrice and mm-hmm. make sure Beatrice can hear you. Yeah, and it's like, go get her, and then we're going to keep talking, and when she gets here, she's probably going to hide and eavesdrop and hear our conversation. So, th- w- once again, we're I- instantly like, everyone's just eavesdropping. Everybody's always hiding. Hiding, and <laughs> I-, I don't know. Well, my first instinct when I see like friends and family coming isn't to hide in a bush. It depends. <laughs> depends but on the friends speaking, and the family. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, generally speaking, you're correct. <laughs> and, and so... You know, Beatrice comes up and sees them talking about how Benedict has been overcome by love, and and and, and that uh, Don Pedro and Claudio wants her to to tell Beatrice about his passion. Her, uh, they want uh, was it Margaret? Yes, no, Margaret. Was it Ursula? No, it's Margaret. It's Margaret to tell Beatrice about you know, his budding passion for her. Right, and then, um, and then after that, hero, uh, then Ursula, because Ursula is the second one who's who's next involved, and she says, Ursula, t- like now, Ben, now we know Benedict is madly in love with Beatrice. We know that now, but uh, she's never gonna, she's never gonna tell Beatrice because mm-hmm. you know she's afraid that you know all she would do is make fun of Benedict again yeah, and scorn him, um, and so Ursula agrees to that. She decides, yeah, she's yeah. gonna go with it. Um, and, and then they start talking up Benedict, like, oh, he's so noble and handsome and witty. And they kind of, like, fawn over him in a way. Right. And they sort of, they rip on Beatrice a little bit, too. It's yeah. like, yeah, she just sort of, like, finds things wrong that aren't really things wrong. Uh, just because she's kind of so sharp about things like that. And, and then very well knowing she is still hidden in the bush. <laughs> right. Like, they can, they, <laughs> absolutely. So... Uh, you know, Hero and, and Ursula finally leave, and Beatrice emerge from her hiding place, and and, and she can't. Be- she's beside herself. She is just like, hold, what, huh? <laughs> and, and she she does the very same thing Benedict did, where instead of like scorn, she's like, oh, think, you know, oh maybe I'll reciprocate that feeling like, a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe Benedict's I'll go with it. That bad? No, he's not. Too, he's not terrible. And then she sort of just decides to go with that very i mean they're like let's do this plan and it went out without a hitch <laughs> without it perfectly and and that's the, that's how the uh scene scene one comes to the closure and now we find ourselves in act three scene two so on the day before the wedding uh don pedro says that he's leaving after the wedding of hero and claudio um, and that he's taking Benedict with him. And the reason he does this and does it so vocally is he wants to see if the seeds of love have been planted. If they've bloomed. Yeah, if, if they've, they've bloomed. bloomed. He's like, well, let's see if Benedict has a reason not to come with me. Right. That reason being 
Beatrice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is all uh, in in, in th- the word escapes me. Uh, it, it's all part of the sting. Like ev- everyone <laughs> right. is fired. Like I I think this would be just a fun play to watch. Oh, all yeah. the hijinks this and is, hiding. Yeah, and, it's it's to catch a predator, but it's to catch a Shakespearean romance. Yeah, romantic lead. <laughs> to catch, mm. a, you know what? We're gonna ditch that joke. I'm leaving it in, but we're just gonna abandon the joke, and we're gonna let that die. <laughs> uh, and, and and so be, uh, Benedict uh, admits that he's a changed man, and uh, they all realize that they were successful and start teasing him like, right. "Oh, you lover boy, uh, you know? we got you, we got you, you son of a gun." And he's like, "Boys, boys, I'm gonna speak with Leonato." And uh, we don't really see that conversation, but it, it's often thought that he's going to ask Leonardo for the approval to right. marry right. The, his Beatrice. Blessing. Yeah, the blessing. And so they both walk off, and, and Don Pedro comments, I mean, uh, Claudio comments to Don Pedro that Beatrice has heard the conversation and the seeds have been planted over there right. for the blossom. And so we'll see if that goes that way. And, and, and so as... as you know, all this like little, I, I imagine like schoolgirls snickering, like, oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, like it's gotta be. <laughs> um, and enter John John. Um, and and he, 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 he goes over to his, uh, his brother. And, and uh, Claudio as He's well. He's like, hey, you guys, you guys need to hear this. Uh, Hero, Hero has been unfaithful. She's disloyal. She's uh, cheated on you, <laughs> essentially. Or she's, she's getting involved with someone else. And Claudio immediately believes him. Well, he doesn't believe what he's hearing, but the doubt was already set in. Right. Like, he's like, I don't, I, no way. No way. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's and, not. And, and 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 Don John's like, it, it, it's possible. Uh, <laughs> and it's happening. Meet me tonight in the courtyard, and I'll show you. And, uh, and then Claudia says, like, all right, uh, and if like, I see any reason not to marry her. I'm going to publicly... Uh, Chastise her, and yeah. chastise her for her misdeeds, right? Which is like the worst. It, some, right before the wedding, too, yeah, right? Like, yeah. S- s- some advice: uh, don't do anything uh, uh, publicly in a relationship. Ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> nothing. Uh, certainly, don't do it, Claudio. Does, is yeah. doing. You got, you if got, you have skeletons in your closet, unearth those skeletons within your bedroom. Don't mm-hmm. take them out into the front room. No one needs to watch you wave around a femur at your wife. I caramba. <laughs> so there's our, there's our love advice for the uh, the month. Uh, don't air your grievances in public. It and it ends badly. But so they they go on with Don Don John's ruse and Don Pedro's ruse, and and we go on to scene three. Act three, scene three. So this scene kind of goes out of left field. We get introduced to a couple new characters. Might I add, this new character introduced <laughs> might be my <laughs> might be a favorite of mine. Um, so this character's name there, there's two, but I'm gonna specifically tell you about Dogberry. <laughs> and Dogberry is cool because Dogberry is just sort of like an oaf, mm-hmm. like a bumbling oaf. <laughs> so so Dogberry is the captain of the guard in Messina. <laughs> And he is he he feigns uh, intelligence. He's not smart at all. Yeah, and he uses big words and 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 wordplay that doesn't make sense. It doesn't sense. work <laughs> and because hard. he just wants to seem smart. And anybody who's like m- microbially dumber than he is is going to be like. Ah. And there is one character. There is one, <laughs> and that that would be his uh, deputy, Virgis. Virgis. <laughs> So these these two uh, men of the guard are introduced, and they're they're talking to the night watch, um, in Messina. Right, and is, so they, they they pick a guy, and they're like, "You're gonna be our watch for the night." So so they they um they they do this like long listing of like you, if you see a burglar, apprehend them, but don't arrest them because it will cause a ruckus. Like <laughs> they're like, n- like the, the ridiculous things are like do your jobs, but. If don't, you do it, don't it, don't like, do it right. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're like, no matter what, don't cause a ruckus. Let him go. Uh, <laughs> but arrest him. If, if there's a baby wailing, d- 
Don't even ask the mom to quiet it. No, just let it just let it happen. It, it's like they start with they they start like they uh, are like gonna say something like prudent and like make sure you don't cause a ruckus. <laughs> and so they like <laughs> basically the, these guards and, and this is talking about how the peasants are significantly more intelligent than the the no, lo, lords of ladies in Shakespearean literature. They're like, oh, oh, oh okay, geez, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, Dogberry. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the, the two, the, the captain and the, the deputy disperse and, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other guards, uh, I know of a sexton. So so there's a, the the couple of the the guard that is left after the two deputies, you know, retreat for the night. Uh, they overhear a conversation between Horatio and Conrad. That, that is, that's just, that's just a sexton. Hmm. Yeah. Like of the profession, or like a—that's his title. Oh, <laughs> so so they overhear Boratio and Conrad, and if you if you don't remember who those two are, they're Don Johns, the bastards men, mm-hmm. who are hatching this plot of heroes' uh, infidelity. They, apparently, they're they're just talking in a courtyard up in front of Leonato's house about the plan, and these ca- these people, these men of the guard overhear this conversation another moment of noting right the things they weren't supposed to uh, right and like that fragmented like mm-hmm. hearing bits and pieces um and then w- w- the night watchman that hears them uh <laughs> arrests them for and i quote villainy <laughs> <laughs> my favorite um, crime the the crime i commit most frequently <laughs> uh he arrests them for villainy and then they agree to go peacefully <laughs> yeah they're like oh we got caught like all right you can take us to the court <laughs> and, and uh so this is uh, it kind of becomes a triangle of plots we got the the guardsmen trying to foil the scheme the scheme happening and then beatrice and benedict naturally and then from that it's the end of scene three we we no longer you know scene change we're no longer with the guard and we have now entered act three scene four so it's early morning on the wedding hero and her her gentlewomen are preparing for the wedding and uh you know, Kiro sends out Ursula to get Beatrice. Margaret is, you know, commenting on what she chose to wear. And it's kind of like prime wedding prep. You know, like it's right. supposed to be pretty chaotic. And then, you know, Margaret being the promiscuous teaser she is, she's Makes doing the classic of, puns, of like, yeah. ooh, like, you know, talking about tonight and like what's going to happen. And, <laughs> you know, so, so Beatrice quickly. You arrives. know, the stuff you discuss with your friends getting married. <laughs> yeah, generally. <laughs> so when Beatrice arrives, uh, she says she's not feeling well. And uh, she kind of, she has like a cold and yeah. she's not as like sharp. Mm-hmm. Right. So, at and this Margaret's point. like, you are sick with love. And, and it is, it is a real ailment, by the way. It, it's yeah. debilitating. <laughs> um, and there's a bit of teasing that oh Beatrice has fallen in love like she said you'd never and everyone's you know giving her a raz and that's when quickly Ursula returns and says the men have come to take Hero to the church which ends yet another kind of short scene but that takes us to act three scene five so we go back to Dogberry and Verges and they they try to stop Leonato on the day of of the wedding and and they want to tell Leonato about the two men they arrested, and and, and Leonardo's like, I'm, I have a wedding to go to. Tell me later. And he's kind of in a hurry, but he he stops for a minute to listen. But Dogberry is taking so long to say the important information that he just sort of like, all right, you you analyze the, you analyze these men. Then yeah, it's like Mis- you guys got this, Mister Mister Dogberry. I, I imagine since Leonardo is the 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 mayor or, or the lord of Messina, he probably is in somewhat involved the way of hiring these men. Yeah, being, being the captain of the guard and whatnot, right? Or in some capacity. Mm-hmm. So I imagine it's like one of those hires that s- seemed fine at first, but now you're really just tired of their bullcrap. Yeah, and, and, and nonsense. And, and so, Dogberry's like trying to talk eloquently and misuse of wordplay. Leonardo's like, what "I gotta go. I you, gotta go. You guys got this. You the, handle you're, it. What you're saying is dumb. Doesn't make sense. But I gotta go." <laughs> so due to Leonardo's impatience and Dogberry's. Uh, incompetence yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll call it that um uh, the plot continues to be able to continue and, and so dogberry and, and verges do what they do and they go 
take the men who got arrested last night to prison to right. question them. And that takes us to the end of Act 3. Act 4, Scene 1. So we are now at the wedding ceremony. We are basically at the altar. There is a friar. Um, his name's Friar Francis. He's cool. But he's going very slow to start the act. They yeah. tell him, come on, get it on with. You know, the classic, like, get to the end. Get to, get to like the end. Like Princess Bride. Get, yeah. Get to, get to the end. The, 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 they're both there at the wedding. And the, the friar asks, do you come here to marry this lady? You know, like, and Claudio says, no. Right. No. And, and everyone's like, ah, oh, he's a trickster, jokester. Uh, and Leonardo is like, he's just joking. It's the friar who is marrying them together, not claudio you know like using wordplay right and, and then they try to proceed and the question about uh any impediment why you should not be conjoined and, and that's when claudio uh sort of jumps in he uh, claudio challenges hero and Leonardo was like uh, uh th- this is a marriage with, with like- a really powerful line by the way the line is uh give not this rotten orange to your friend <laughs> which that carries some weight That's to it brutal that will slap you right in the mouth and, and uh and claudio just keeps delaying and delaying and then eventually you know with the line of the calling her rotten orange it, he he calls her more in in temperate than venus you know the god of like love and 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 calls her a rage and savage sensibility and and then don pedro jumps in and starts condemning hero because mm-hmm. because he was there the night that they were watching quote unquote her be unfaithful when in fact it was margaret. it was margaret and they call her a common stale which is slang for something else <laughs> and it's, well it's, it's slang for whore yeah <laughs> and uh they're all just berating this this young woman who just who loves this really man did nothing wrong at all <laughs> publicly publicly and uh, she faints. Just on the spot, she passes out. And then both Don, John, Don Perro, and Claudio. They leave. They, they leave. exit the church. And this is kind of like a shock of character. Leonato believes them. He's like, oh, how dare she? She is a disgrace yeah, to how, how could she do that? Like, believing, and then he's believing these men over his daughter, who during this parading, she's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, right. And, and and he takes their side and uh, he starts raging, and, and, and Beatrice is just there, is like, no, 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 she is innocent. Be, you know, Beatrice being her closest friend and confidant, she's like, there's no way Hero did any of this, and Beatrice never wavers in her belief. No, of she's Hero. like, this is absolutely not what happened. And this is where Beatrice really becomes like a really cool, like she was already a really cool character to me. But like, well, like these ascends. next few scenes, mm-hmm. she's she takes her stubbornness and hardness and like will. Right. and thrusts it oh, forward absolutely. and and so she's she's there standing up for her innocence and 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 she's like don pedro and and, and, and claudio they're wrong when friar francis jumps in here mm-hmm. and, and he says no there's no way she's telling like look at her complexion like she would have not acted no that she, passionately no, that, certainly and not been like guilty. that is not how that is not what happened is, is what friar francis is saying and he's like all right how about this we'll make a scheme and so, you know, <laughs> yet another one and he's like let's pretend that after she fainted she died and that gives us enough time that nothing should progress we can figure out what's happening and it will also convince claudio to be a little more like sorry or or he'll, he'll like he'll take back what he yeah said, like kind of. if he killed her he loves this woman he still loves this woman there's no way he's and he'll, not he'll feel really awful if mm-hmm. that's you know the case so that they, they hatch a scheme that you know they're pretending that hero is dead mm-hmm. and uh they all they all agree the people left in the room and they're they're just hoping they'll realize that claudio will realize what he done and and grieve for her mm-hmm and, and so everyone, you know, dispatches for the scheme, and Beatrice goes to Benedict, and they are alone. And, and, and Benedict, he, despite being close friends with Claudio, he believes Hero. Mm-hmm. And, and so they're both in agreement, both the, for the first time, actually. Yeah. 
Uh, Apart from their unbeknownst feelings for each other at this point. Yes, but th- for the first time, they're both like, oh, Hero's, Hero's innocent. Yeah, Hero's innocent. And, and in this scene of agreements, they both proclaim their love for one another in wonderful wordplay. No, oh, certainly. Like, how, like, they kind of beat around the bush a little, but then they come in and, like, go in for the kill of, like, I love you. And they're like, well, of this and this and this, and, and, no, and, I, I love you too. Yeah, and, and Benedict goes, like, make make me, he's, like, he's hopped up on love juice. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, tell me, I'll, do, tell me to do something crazy just, just to prove how much I love you. And then she uh, says, all right, kill Claudio. <laughs> Yeah, I'm there in my head. It was very con- cartoonish, where he's like doting, hearts everywhere, and she's like, "Kill him!" Kill and she's like, "Make him freeze frame, dead. like uh, uh, record scratch freeze frame." <laughs> You're probably wondering <laughs> how, how I got, I got in my situation. <laughs> so he's like, "I can't." He's like, "I can't." He's my best friend, and then she's like, "Well, I guess, well, you I guess really you don't love me, me. yeah." <laughs> Which man, man, that's a. If there was a woman like kill Jacob for love, I'd be like, well. He loves me enough. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> very much likewise. I that that person. I, I think if they're gonna make you kill your your best man, your best friend, eh, especially in the twenty first century. Especially, yeah. Like that's a a crime punishable by lots by lots more than I think it could have in this circumstance specifically. Yeah, trials to death was pretty common time. Well, after and before this. <laughs> So and he, then, but then Beatrice gets upset with him, and so she goes to leave, and, and Benedict goes, wait, 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 fine, fine, I will, I will, like, I'll challenge him, I'll try to kill him, and, and he's like, well, maybe if I challenge him, he'll, you know, realize his error, and then back down, yeah, right, um, and then that takes us into Act Four, Scene Two, which is also coincidentally, I think, the last scene of this act. Hey, this one yeah. is brief. Uh. So enter Dogberry and his men. Yeah, my boy's back. Uh, The sexton prepares to examine the prisoners, Horatio and Conrad, about their crime. Um, And both Dogberry and Verge's bumbling on their words, questioning them. Uh, They get insulted by the prisoners and (laughs) called false knaves. (laughs) Oh, what a brilliant... I hope that comes back into, like common vernacular i mean we can start it now you're right everyone start calling people knaves it's, yeah start calling them knaves if they've upset you in any way <laughs> call um, your children knaves call your husband a knave <laughs> whatever works yeah uh and so the sexton's like how about we get the uh the the the, the witnesses to give their testimony um instead of these bumbling fools <laughs> and and so enter george seacole and uh, he was the watchman that overheard the uh, whole conversation earlier. And then he he tells them, he's like, yep, I heard them talking about They were about talking it. about this, Don yep. John's, the plot. He paid them handsomely for the thing. And, you know, Boratio's like, that's true. He didn't <laughs> deny it. Right, and then he's like, well, they, they can't do anything about it because Don John is gone. They, they recently, he, he fled he once fled. The, yeah. the plot has been... Hatched. Hatched. <laughs> and... He he must think something is up if he knows his like his men didn't show up mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I think he he hatched his plot, caused as much discord as he can and can, and, and, and just jets. He's like my men aren't here. I paid them. I'm out. Yep. And uh, technically, in that very in that situation, he's kind of blameless. <laughs> he did everything he said he was gonna do. And and the the sexton's like he he he's fled and hero has died. And so the news getting around that hero is dead is getting around quickly. Um, and he's like, how about we bring the prisoners to Leonato? See what he has, what he makes like, of let, this. Let's let the mayor pass yeah, the judgment. Yeah, the governor kind of figured this yeah. out. And so Conrad, you know, in prison, shackled up, you know, plot foiled. He makes a final attempt to, you know, berate <laughs> Dogberry and calls him, to quote, an ass. And Dogberry takes utter and complete offense, offense to this. To this. this it, is the worst the thing. The worst thing that this man could have called him. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he holds on to that for the rest of the play <laughs> for the whole last act <laughs> which reminds me that's the end of act 4 act 5 scene 1 so here we are this is the final act a lot of shakespeare i think most of shakespeare all i think all they're all five five acts, acts yeah. which uh, was that way in most very classic literature for a while but then kind of slowly fizzled right. out to the to our, our typical maybe three act that you see now. yeah three three act is is pretty common uh with the third act being 
existing mostly to wrap up the loose what, ends, yeah. kind of right at the end. Um, but so, but the two act play is, is kind of more, I suppose, more in style at the moment. So, scene one, uh, we are we're with Ante- uh, Antonio and Leonato, um, and he's he's grieving over the villainy that has ruined his daughter's reputation. Mm-hmm. And uh, Claudio and Pedro appear, and they're like, uh, "We're out of here, peace." Like, right. <laughs> Like what's happened uh, has disgraced all of us, and we're we're going. And they were planning to stay for a while, right? And but before they can leave, Leonato uh, says, "Claudio, I'm challenging you to a duel because you killed Hero." Yeah, it was it was your words that did this. Um, and Leonato is an old man; like he's mm-hmm. he's not of dueling. No, and and prowess. this is kind of like this has sort of hurt his reputation a little bit. Mm-hmm. Leonato's at least. So. You know, Antonio heatedly backs up Leonardo. And, and he actually challenges challenges him as well, mm-hmm. uh, additionally. Yeah, and, and Don Pedro is like, nope, I saw it with my own eyes. Hero is a big old cheater, and you saying that she's not is a slight on me as my word and stuff like that. And and so... And so at, at that point, Antonio and Leonardo both just kind of in a huff they're like, leave. <laughs> So these are men being like, my word over yours, and I'm of high esteem. So all these older older men are like, you know, feuding and like challenging each other to duels. And uh, quickly Benedict arrives, and, and, and Claudio and Pedro. They're like, hey, you'll never believe it. All these guys just challenge Claudio to a duel. And Benedict goes, well, buddy, <laughs> I got some news for you. I'm also challenging you to a duel. But they kind of oh yeah they they're go. like ah you rep you're just you're ribbing me you're ribbing me and, and they they they're like oh is this Beatrice like you know and well I mean it is and he went yes <laughs> yes <laughs> like without a shred of irony he's like yes Claudio you killed Hero and I am challenging you to a duel and Don Pedro's like oh buddy you can't and he he no long he makes him no longer a member of his company and, uh, <laughs> Don John his bastard brother has flee right and and when it, they're also making fun of benedict all through this because yeah. like he can't retort like he used to and they're like boy you're looking like a red tomato boy and, <laughs> and they're just making fun of because he looks so mad yeah and so you know benedict trying to keep you know his pride and he's, he's like i am challenging you to a, a duel claudio and then claudio is like all right fine we're gonna meet here in a little bit and we'll fight and th- so the challenge has been several challenges put out um and and just as everyone you know uh benedict leaves enter dogberry and verges and, and they bring in the prisoners to meet with Leonato and, and for the governor and the judge um don pedro quickly recognizes his brother's followers in the chains and you know he's like well what did these men do like hold up (laughs) tell me what's happening here um and uh bratio himself with regret and shame so uh he's learned his lesson somewhat he, he explains the plot of john don john's uh messing with the wedding and hero and claudio mm-hmm. and he admits it was margaret and himself at the window and that it had nothing to do with margaret margaret was just being a flirt and had no clue that she was a part of the ruse and, and they're both you know claudio and, and don john no don pedro <laughs> last act and i can't get it right <laughs> don pedro are stunned they went oh oh we've made we've, it we've made we've a grave m- mistake <laughs> man we shouldn't have done this publicly shouldn't <laughs> no that was probably not a good idea so then they're like all right youtube punks are coming with us well we're gonna go question margaret so, so enter leonato and uh antonio talking to the sexton and uh leonato talks to Boratio, who admits his wrongdoings and, and uh then Leonato reconfers yes, with he, he's like he's like hey this is what happened and he's like we're gonna take them and we're gonna go question Margaret yeah and and uh, so Leonardo's like you guys did cause her death and because you were wrong about it even her, worse her quote unquote death her because death he's, he's still you know right. scheming he he commands them to tell everyone in Messina that she was falsely denounced to you know regain their honor and, and there's like you guys have to go grieve and appear at her tomb. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he commands them to go to the tomb and it's like, and you're going to marry Antonio's daughter. And 
they've never met or heard of Antonio's daughter. Right. Antonio being Leonardo's brother. And mm-hmm. I don't actually think he has a daughter. <laughs> At this point, it's... Yeah. Everything is conjecture. Yeah. And, and so they agree. And so, you know, Leonardo goes and finds Margaret and, you know, asks her if she knew what was going on. But, like, Beratio's like, no, Margaret, she's chill. It was all me. Let the, the, the maid be good. Right. And then finally, Dogberry <laughs> returns, <laughs> and he makes one final complaint to Leonardo about Conrad calling him an ass. <laughs> he said, "I'm not okay with He's that." Like, this, he has crimes of villainy and calling me a mean name, <laughs> and I don't like that. You know, trying to like puff himself up, right? And and so, uh, you know, Leonardo's like, "Good job," and tells him to leave, <laughs> and. Uh, they, they, they exit Dogberry and Verges, and, you know, Claudio promises to go mourn at Hero's tomb. And that leads us into Act 5, Scene 2. Uh, and at this point, uh, Benedict is working on a sonnet. And uh, I, I believe Margaret is helping him kind of figure it out. Um, and then he's like, hey, you should go get Beatrice so I can share this sonnet with her. Um and, and you know Margaret's you know teasing him. Oh, the whole, and, all, all, and the, she's all like, the while. I'll do this for you if you tell everyone that I am the great. Like it's like flirty <laughs> and all that because Margaret's Margaret, right? And uh, so once she leaves, Benedict you know, he tries his song by himself for Beatrice, and uh, he admits that yeah, probably writing love songs aren't for him. Yeah, probably not. I, I think the the, the line. Or, or one of the lines that kind of um, alludes to that is the like that and I are too uh, are too wise to woo peaceably. Yeah, yeah. Which I, because you know that's that's the very standard way of of wooing, especially in a, in a Shakespearean yeah type uh, story uh, involved with a lot of pageantry. Mm-hmm. And I think Benedict at this point has realized we kind of don't have any of that. Yeah. And so, uh, and you know, Beatrice enters and she's like, so you challenge your friend? And uh, he's like, I'm, I'm waiting for Claudio to respond. And then quickly changes the subject. <laughs> and, uh, and and he, you know, starts you know flirting with her. And she's like, so which of some of my bad parts have you first fell in love? Like he's playing those like cutesy lovey games. Yeah. And um, they're both, it, it's kind of like uh it, it's it, for me when I was reading it, it was it was kind of rewarding in a way to be like to see how they started and now they're like right. witty, quippy arguments turn into they're back, they're, they're but in a different sort like of way, loving, witty stuff, and it, it's really fun. Mm-hmm. But there would be really fun plays parts to play as. I oh, think. certainly, yeah. certainly, especially if you could really comprehend the wordplay that they <laughs> yeah. use. Um, and. Uh, they, they continue this playful conversation and then Ursula arrives and she's like, uh, Beatrice, time to go to the tomb. Um, and she's like, by the way, guys, there is this whole plot you will not believe. <laughs> and they they get the skinny. And Hero's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she, was, she was completely innocent. As expected by them. I, I don't know if it's in this scene or the next scene. Like, uh, Beatrice kind of backs off about the duel. She's like, oh, I guess he was just mistaken. And it was all Don John's fault. Mm-hmm. And that leads us into... Act 5, Scene 3. The scene takes place um, early, early morning. And they're all around their family tomb where Hero is kind of being put in. There's like a short little memorial service. Yeah, that they do. yeah. And uh, so both Claudio and Don Perro and Leonardo are all there. Or... No, no, no. It, no Leonardo. Don, it's, it's Don, Pedro... And Claudio, namely. And, and they're men. Yes. Um, and they're all there to grieve and pay their respects. Right. And Claudio, he writes uh, an epitaph. Mm-hmm. An epitaph. And then reads it. Um, and then he sings a song. <laughs> and then he resolves to, every year, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this. I'm going to continue this ritual. And so after, you know, dawn breaks and they finish their, their grieving and their mourning, they head back to the villa. Of Leonardo. Yeah, Leonardo's home. And, and they change clothes for this marriage that they were agreed to do right. with Antonio's daughter. Quote unquote, daughter. 
that that's that it's one of the a short one quick it, it's the story is really coming to a culmination here where the loose ends are starting to tie themselves up and we go on to act five scene four so the, the this is the final scene of the play um all of this building up to the conclusion heroes quote-unquote death mm-hmm. marriage and, and that's how you know it's a comedy <laughs> it, ends just, in a, it ends in a, in a wedding yep um and at this point, too, um, Antonio's kind of... They, they're understanding what they're doing now. Uh, Antonio's like, all right, I will pretend that Hero is my daughter um, so that Claudio thinks that he's marrying Hero's cousin, I believe. it's it, he's, he, he, That's what he believes, is that yeah. he's marrying Hero, Hero's yeah, yeah. cousin. Um, and then that's when Benedict finally like gets to ask Leonardo permission to mm-hmm. marry Beatrice. They're like... It, uh, all this chaos can like and at the same at the same ceremony as well yeah <laughs> like, so, so it's, like, it's a big double wedding double my, wedding my big fat italian double wedding, wedding. <laughs> double wedding <laughs> and, and so the, the everyone like all right this is the plan they they put all the girls in veils they're they're masked yeah, yeah. I, and so that the once claudio and pedro come they don't immediately see the deception right um so, so they uh, the, the the two men enter, uh, and, and they prepare to marry. And right as they get ready, the woman Antonio's daughter unveils herself, and, and his hero and, and Claudia goes another one. <laughs> <laughs> he's like uh, a- another hero, basically, and uh, and he's Claudio once again is overcome with his love for this woman right. that he threw under the bus, <laughs> not. <laughs> Not a day earlier, <laughs> and and so Benedict's like, okay, let's get this double wedding going, and he's looking around the veiled ladies, and so so Benedict is uh he's looking at the veiled ladies like, where's Beatrice, and and uh he he's looking around, he's like, where Beatrice, you know, I show yourself essentially, and, and um. They they kind of have like a little one more like moment of wit together, as right? Like, but kind of like yeah. this enduring little yeah. And, and she kind of she so she takes her her veil off mm-hmm. and then and he's like, "Do you love me?" And she says, "Well, I mean, no more than it's reasonable to love you." <laughs> um, and then he kind of goes, "Oh yeah, me too." <laughs> and then that's when they realize that they oh this whole thing's been a very elaborate ploy uh-huh. to get us together. And then, um, you know, from there that they, they have their both Beatrice and good old benny boy have 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 prepared sonnets and and claudio and hero kind of reveal those to everybody it's like no 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 your feelings are real your feelings because you wrote them down look that makes them concrete yeah (laughs) and uh and they both like like oh they're they're right oh they're right we love each other we're all good yeah and and benedict suggests uh, a dance begins before the marriage ceremony even happens right (laughs) Well, at this point, Benedict and Claudio are like, can we be friends again? Yeah, He's like, like, that they, was they, they, kind they, of a whole mess. Everything's getting tied up and sewn up quite perfectly. And then, boom, right at the end, a messenger appears and, and interrupts the festivities with the news that Don John has taken, has been taken prisoner and is being brought back to Messina. And they all kind of go like, Eh, we'll deal with it. Yeah, we'll deal with it. And tomorrow, that's how the play ends. It was, it basically, he's like, "All right, start the music. We got a party," and, and they just go. If this was a, a movie made in the early two thousands, uh, a, a song would have started playing, and there would have been an entire dance scene. Yeah, to Smash rap. Mouth song would have, yeah. would have played, <laughs> uh, and then all the animated characters would have had a, a dance. That's how. The, the reason we say that is because every animated movie, specifically mm-hmm. for like. 10 years ended with a dance party then princess bride too. And yeah uh and, yeah uh ella enchanted yeah all those type yeah so there's a dance break and that's that's, that's essentially what would that is the bards much ado about nothing if you're confused still that's okay it shakespeare is something that no one expects you to get instantly and and your exposure in the 11th grade is not Hamlet, nearly enough no well and yeah, it's not nearly enough. And and so we hope that we could have brought some ways and more understanding as you read through this. Um, it was hopefully it was a little entertaining because it's an entertaining play. It's it, a, when you know how to read it, it's a mm-hmm. it's a really it's a funny play. One of his better comedies, I feel. Oh, I I, I, I really like agree. it. And uh, 
So if you didn't read it and we just inspired you to read it, um, this podcast, I hope, helps you comprehend what's going on. Also, there's no shame in looking up what's going on. Because, you know, that's part of... That that comes with the territory. Yeah, we're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to explore. We want to hear what you guys thought of this play and, and our analysis. If you liked our opinions, if you thought we missed something... If you laughed at a joke that was made here or there. Feel free to tell us. And and we, we're excited to hear from you. We're excited to hear feedback. Um, so th- thank you. Thank Th- you so much for listening. It's been really fantastic to have you here with us. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been a fun, li- so far it's been a fun little book club. And I yeah. hope that that trend continues. I've had a very good time with you guys. Um, and I, th- I think it's it's just turning out pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, so if you also are enjoying it as much as we are having these conversations and listening to these conversations, one, join the conversation. Two, prepare yourself for next month. Next month, we are going to be reading a very interesting play that perhaps you've not heard of. In mm-hmm. fact, I can almost guarantee you've not heard of it. This play is called The Open Hand by Robert Kaisley. Uh, like I said, there's many ways to find plays, uh, bookstores, uh, online libraries, uh if you're having a hard time find them reach out and we can we can help you get to the places you need to we highly encourage you support all the authors if as they, best you can i mean shakespeare doesn't need much support here no that guy's been dead for like at least 20 years <laughs> at least um minimum <laughs> so just thank you so much for coming and listening to us it's been an absolute pleasure and we hope to see you again next month as we read robert Kaisley's the open hand goodbye Theater Is is produced in association with the Compass Rose Company. If you want to hear more from us, make sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you are listening. More information on the show can be found in the episode's show notes at theaterispodcast.com. And if you want to see more from Compass Rose Company, visit us at Compass Rose Company on YouTube and Compass Rose Company on Instagram.